I know nothing about beer. Educate me, please. Fresh beer is everything, and live music is everything. This video is made possible by our supporters on Patreon, including these fine people. Thank you so much. My name is Matt Biggers, and I'm trying to help independent food businesses struggling during the pandemic. This video series will show you some great local places to eat and drink. I hope to encourage you to order more takeout and more delivery so more of our favorite restaurants make it through this pandemic. Are you looking for lots of outdoor and indoor seating with plenty of space for social distancing? How about a friendly and knowledgeable team serving award-winning, delicious, and wonderfully complex craft beer? I think I found the perfect place for you. My name is Nathaniel Gravely, founder and president of Gravely Brewing. Gravely Brewing is what we like to call the world's first music brewery. I've always been a, a music fan first and a beer fan second. Our head brewers a beer fan first and a music fan second. There's tons of places that are music venues that have craft beer. There's tons of craft breweries that have a lot of live music performances, sometimes inside of them, or love music. Uh, but we take it a step further. Beers are named after, you know, songs, titles themselves, uh, artists. You know, it kind of inspires all of our beers in a lot of ways. And then, yeah, as you can see here with awesome installation of a deconstructed drum kit behind us uh, and the wall of sound behind the bar, like it is very much in the DNA of our space too and not just our product. While we experiment and have a lot of IPAs and hazy IPAs and things of that nature, variant beers with fruit extracts, et cetera, we really pride ourselves in making traditional beers that are true to style guidelines and have just been you know, tried and true beer styles through the hundreds and hundreds of years the beers have been made, which includes obviously Germany is kind of the root of all of it for us. Sprockets, like our award-winning German Pilsner. I'm drinking a Kolsch right now, a German Kolsch. We, we try to stay within those guidelines. I'm joined by head brewer Nick Felton, who will not only teach me how the beer is made, we take our crushed malt, but also how to drink and appreciate it. All right. You are here to teach me. We're, uh, you've got some things for me to, to smell. Yes. And so that way, hopefully, I can learn to appreciate good beer so I'm not just drinking the cheapest, lightest stuff in the yeah. world. Going back to how the beer itself is made, I just want to go over some of the ingredients and what they're going to bring to beer. OK. So what we'll actually do is we'll start with, okay. traditionally, if you're going to go with uh, your, your your typical light beer, this is the ingredient you're gonna get the most of. That is our malt. Um, that is barley that has been roasted very, very mildly. Um, you can even you can try eating some, it's just got a little bit of a crackery taste to it. Going from there, this is some of our dark roasted malt. This is called midnight wheat. Um, and that's what's gonna give you some, some of those roasted coffee, chocolate. I'm getting that coffee, yeah. And some really dark coloring yeah, to so, be. And this one is called what again? Midnight Wheat. Midnight, mm, yeah, oh yeah. And then these are two different types of our hops. So one of these is our Saz hop, um, and that's gonna give you, uh, that's a, a, a typically a Czech hop. Um, mm -hmm. And that's gonna give you more of an earthy kind of floral, um, note to it. So this is like when I, you know, try an IPA. This is this is that smell, you know, that I associate with craft beer. When I smell yes. or taste yes. it, I this is it. Okay. But the crazy thing is that hops can have so much variety because the other one there is what's called a zaka, and that is a hop that brings out a lot of stone fruit. So you're gonna get you get a lot of like plum or apricot in that. And a lot of these newer hops are much more fruit forward. Some of them have big pineapple and mango notes to them. Get all over the board with those hops. That, that I like. Like, I'd like a beer made out of these three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that beer exists. Fresh beer just tastes different. It really does. Like, once you have it at a, at a brewery and then you have it out of a can or a draft can around town, which still tastes fine, it just tastes so much better when it comes out of a tap room's taps. So we're gonna start out with a nice light beer. Okay. Um, my personal favorite, this is our Italian Pilsner, Mambo Italiano. And a lot of people, uh, a lot of people initially don't like the idea of a lot of head on their beer, a lot of that foam. 
um, but having a, a, having a nice head on top of that beer is essential. It brings out a lot more aroma in it, and it's that is a sign that the beer itself is well carbonated, is well balanced, it doesn't have any oils or infections in it. Mambo Italiano, cheers. I'll, uh... Mmm. So this way we can, mm. I'll step off here to try it myself. So I feel like I, I get some of this, but mild. You're gonna get that light uh, malt character from a Pilsner malt in there. And then you're gonna get a little bit of a mixture of those two. You're gonna get some mild spiciness from um, some more earthy hops, some of those noble hops. And then you're gonna get a little bit of a a, a very, very mild, like, fruit characteristic from that. I like that. That's a good one. Fresh beer out of our tap room specifically, you know, served the way we want it to be served in the glassware that we want to be served in at the right temperature, the right carbonation, everything. We have total control over that product, and it's at its peak, you know, quality from a fresh standpoint. I didn't realize fresh was so important because, like, when I think of all alcohol, Wine, beer, spirits, it's all about fermentation. Sure. Which doesn't totally. sound fresh to me right. at all. Right. So I didn't know it mattered that much. You've just beers, educated. Beers. I'm going to look at labels now. Yeah. So this is our Dunkelweissen. Quite a change in color. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a nice light brown. When the sun comes through it, you get a little bit of that amber note coming through. Mm -hmm. This is a wheat beer. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ruin things a little bit for you and tell you it does have some of that midnight weed in it. Mmm, smells. So definitely, like, I'm not getting any floral or citrus notes at all. No. Okay. Look at me, I'm learning. Oh, yeah. So this is, this is, uh, Vicens are very kind of unique style mm -hmm. because they have, um, they use a special yeast. Um, and that yeast typically is gonna produce two primary flavors, and those are gonna be clove and banana esters. I am getting that banana. So we do a couple I, different know, I've styles. Tried, I've tried Hefeweizens and is it? Uh, this is a Dunkelweizen. Dunkelweizen, what's, what's the difference? With the, the Dunkelweizen is just a darker, more malt forward version of a Hefeweizen. A hint of chocolate, maybe a little bit of like dried orange, like candied orange. Get that orange, yeah. Um, but so it's a little bit more of a fall or winter centric bison. You're not really gonna have much of any hops to it whatsoever. Um, it's gonna be a little, have a little bit more sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's quite sweet. Well, yeah, I like it. Oh, it's one of our best sellers yeah. by far. No, that's nice. We're fortunate that we do have a big square footage. During times of social distancing six feet apart, it, nice. it creates more opportunity for us to at least try to make more money yeah. uh, by getting people in safely and responsibly versus a place that's a lot smaller that only has maybe 15 tables and all of a sudden they have, you know, five. Yeah, and how are you guys keeping people safe? You know, we sanitize everything. All of our tables and chairs are six feet, if not more, apart. Have hand sanitizer stations set up everywhere. Uh, we're doing basically contactless forms of payment. There's really not a single touch point in here uh, where a customer is basically coming into contact physically with anybody else. I mean, obviously, everybody has to wear masks coming in. They can take them off the table. Our staff's masks up the entire shift. You know, my, my mission here is to encourage people to either you know, get takeout, delivery, or, or come out for socially distanced dining, and they want to hear from from people like you that are that are taking it seriously. I've never gotten more feedback about any single issue than how excited and you know thankful people are for what we've done in terms of taking COVID nineteen seriously as a business. Right. Um, and there's some people that have frankly told us they're not going really anywhere else because they only feel safe coming here. You come here, you get a fantastic selection of fresh beers. There's also food. You guys have a, a partnership with... Mayan Street Food. Mayan Street Food, yeah, which so... is the food truck of the Mayan Cafe. Correct. And they've got a nice menu. I saw some tacos on there. Yeah. Their food is sensational. You know, they, they sustainably source everything. Fresh ingredients, local ingredients. Again, you can taste it. Like, it, it tastes a, a lot better than a ton of other tacos. 
where head chef Bruce grew up, you know, street food was the local fare. So I think he's always kind of had this itch and this vision to kind of make something a little more casual and true to the roots that he grew from. from. And, and beer and beer and tacos are you can't go wrong. A wonderful combination. Yeah, very. Mm. So what am I, what am I drinking here? It's a Baltic porter. Uh, it's delicious. It's it's <laughs> dark. It's well carbonated, but not too carbonated. So you get a lot of that roasted malty taste. It's the first Baltic porter we've actually ever made. So this is gonna be all this, am I? Right? Oh yeah. So everything gets a little bit of this, and really everything gets a little bit of hops as well. Right. Okay. But this is what you're gonna get out of it first and foremost. Yeah. I am a Porter fan. <laughs> Did you not know that until I... now? Well, I like brown ales. Mm -hmm. uh, porters, I, I don't think I've ever yeah. tried a Porter. So uh, this is, yeah, tell me about this. I think I'm a Porter fan. So this one is, you're gonna get, it's got a lot of those dark roasted malts in it. Mm -hmm. It actually has a, a variety of them all mixed together. Uh, so this one is gonna give you Definitely some notes of chocolate, some roasted coffee notes. Yeah. Um, and then if you dig a little bit deeper, you are gonna get to almost a little bit of a, a prune or raisin characteristic okay. hidden down in there. Oh, challenge uh, accepted. Oh yeah. <laughs> Not that I, like I even know what a prune tastes like. like I called my grandmother. <laughs> Sorry, grandma. <laughs> It's, uh, you gotta dig deep sometimes to kind of identify what what flavors there are in some of these. Yeah. This is, this is my favorite. This is what I would order, and this is the... After midnight. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, rich, velvety, mm. yeah. So now I know what to order. There's something out there for everyone. I think a good analogy to think about is if you go to like a five-star restaurant, like you're not gonna go get paid for this, this meal and then be like, can, I, can you box it up? I'm just gonna go eat it in my apartment. No, you wanna like eat it how it's served you, when they serve it, how they want you to eat it. And beer's the same thing. Like when you go to the brewery, like I wanna have it how the brewer made it. I wanna have it like in the glass they want me to drink out of, at the right temperature. You know, it's all these things that people probably don't really think about. Um, that That's why to me, it's always better at the brewery, always. <laughs> Please visit patreon.com forward slash mabig to sign up for exclusive content, monthly Q&As, and early access to videos. Thank you so much. Drinks actually like an IPA. All of those are, are trigger words for me, so.